You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. Is Iran officially endorsing Kamala Harris for president? That's right. There was a... um, Donald Trump's campaign was hacked over the weekend. Um, It was hacked on Saturday. And they seem to believe it was Iran who was behind it, which is not actually surprising at all. And so that's something I want to get into. I got a Politico article that I want to... uh, that I want to go through because the 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 hacked materials was actually disseminated through Politico. Um, the Trump campaign, nobody's officially verified that it was Iran that was part of the cyber attack, but I think it's safe to say that the Trump campaign probably knows a little bit about Iran and cyber attacks. Um, so I want to go through that. I want to go through some possible motives why Iran would would be attacking Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris. I think it's obvious, um, but we're going to go over it because I think it's important for people to hear, especially people, believe it or not, that aren't into politics and they happen to be watching the show. I think it's important that they know what is going on in our government. It's Believe it or not, and it's crazy to think that there's people out there that don't actually pay attention to politics. How it's possible... I have no idea, to be honest. I've always been into politics since I was real little. Um, I've gotten more into politics since 2016. Uh, Really, 2008 is when I really started getting into politics. I voted for Barack Obama. You guys know that. Um, For those of you out there that don't know that, yes, I voted for Barack Obama back in 2008. I didn't vote for anybody in 2012 because both of the candidates sucked, and I just didn't feel like voting for anybody. Um, I was young. Uh, 2008 was the first time I ever voted, and I got caught up into the Obama hype, the Obama zeitgeist, which is exactly what the media is trying to do for Kamala, uh, which is something else I want to talk about. So I want to talk about the cyber attack on the Trump campaign. I want to get into the possible endorsement of <laughs> from Iran for Kamala Harris. And then I want to go into this whole, who exactly owns the media? I know a lot of people I've seen on on social media, they're talking about the media being so manipulative over the people. And it's because there's only a handful of people that own 99.9% of the media, other than alternative media like this show. But all the mainstream media outlets, they're all owned by a handful of people. And I know this probably won't come to a surprise. I know this probably isn't a surprise to you, but those handful of people don't really like Donald Trump because Donald Trump brings something they don't like, and that is peace. They don't like peace. They like war. Everything's about war now. It's not a coincidence that you had peace and prosperity for four years Donald Trump was in office. And then within just weeks, or months of the Biden administration, we find ourselves in conflicts all over the world, uh, starting with the Afghanistan debacle, which was pretty much a green light to all of our adversaries. Like, yeah, there's clearly nobody smart running the United States, so if we're going to attack, we better do it now, while Donald Trump's not in there. And so all these media outlets, they have a bias. They're obviously biased. Everybody has a bias. And they don't want Donald Trump to be president. And so being how they own 99.9% of the media, they're going to do everything they can to stop him. And that includes propagandizing the people. And how do they do that? Through their media outlets. So I actually want to go over this media shaping the narrative stuff. I want to uh, I want to go over who owns these companies, how all these media conglomerates are, you know, who they all fall under. There's only about six of them. Um, I think it's important for people to know that. And then I want to go through this this whole uh, narrative of Kamala Harris being like the next best thing since sliced bread. You know, like 
there's some crazy stuff happening, folks. It's like we're living in a real George Orwell novel. Um, I have some videos that I want to play. I have some photos that I um I have a photo that I want to share with you of a uh, a fake. It's a fake photo that the Kamala campaign, the Harris Walls campaign, was spreading online, and. I don't know how people find this stuff, but they caught this within five minutes of this picture circulating the internet. And it's shocking that they just brazenly are just trying to gaslight the American people into thinking Kamala Harris is like the next coming Barack Obama, like the next coming Jesus, you know, like it's just crazy, folks. The stuff we're the stuff we're going through is just crazy. And they do this every four years. They hype up the people. They divide the people. They race bait the people. This is what they do every four years. And we know this. Everybody knows this. I mean, you don't even have to be in politics and know that the media and the politicians like to divide the people months before going into an election. So that's how they get votes. They have to divide the people. We all know this. And so I want to go through that photo. I have some shocking videos. Um, and it just proves that all of this is fake. This whole Kamala is, you know, is dominating in the polls. It's just all fake. It's what we like to call astroturfing. And so I want to go over a couple of those things. And that's probably pretty much going to be all we're going to get into for the show. Um, so yeah, so let's get into this political article. Um, this came out today. From Politico, hat tip to Alex Eisenstadt. So it says, former President Donald Trump's campaign said Saturday that some of its internal communications had been hacked. The acknowledgement came after Politico began receiving emails from an anonymous account with documents from inside the Trump's operation. The campaign blamed, quote, foreign sources hostile to the United States, citing a Microsoft report on Friday that Iranian hackers sent a spear phishing email in June to a high-ranking official on a presidential campaign. That was actually from Microsoft. So that's what the report said, basically saying, hey, listen, Iran hackers are sending phishing emails to presidential campaigns. Um, Microsoft did not identify the campaign targeted by the email and declined, and declined to comment on Saturday. Politico has not independently verified the identity of the hacker or their motivation. And a Trump campaign spokesperson, Stephen, I think his name is Stephen Chang, uh, declined to say if they had further information sustaining the campaign suggestion that it was targeted by Iran. If I'm pronouncing, if I'm mispronouncing the name, I apologize. Um, and you spell your name with a V too, so you must be pretty cool. Um, I've never met a Stephen who spells their name with a V. I didn't like. <laughs> We're all cool, man. Um, so he goes on, he says, quote, these documents were obtained illegally from foreign sources hostile to the United States intended to interfere with the 2024 election and sow chaos throughout our democratic process. On Friday, a new report from Microsoft found that Iranian hackers broke into the account of a high ranking official on the U.S. presidential campaign in June 2024, which coincides with the close timing of President Trump's selection of a vice presidential nominee. That makes sense. Um, Stephen Chang declined to say whether the campaign had been in contact with Microsoft or law enforcement about the breach, saying it would not discuss such conversations. On July 22nd, Politico began receiving emails from an anonymous account over the course of the past, over the course of the past few weeks. The person who used an AOL email account and identified themselves only as Robert relayed what appeared to be internal communications from a senior Trump campaign official. A research dossier the campaign had apparently done on Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, which was dated February 23rd, was included in the documents. The documents are authentic, according to two people familiar with them and granted anonymity to describe internal, internal communications. One of the people described the dossier as a preliminary version of Vance's vetting file. So this is actually pretty serious stuff. This is not like a, a grocery list, you know, that these hackers are getting. They are, they found some pretty, probably pretty confidential stuff. I mean, when you have a vetting list for a vice presidential pick, that's pretty serious stuff, man. And so what else did they get? 
Mm -hmm. This is why I say Iran definitely wants Kamala Harris to win this election. And that should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> the research dossier was a 270, damn, 271 page document based on a publicly available information about Vance's past record and statements with some, with some such as his past criticisms of Trump identified in the document as quote, potential vulnerabilities. Wait a minute. So you guys remember this, this narrative that was going across the airwaves about JD Vance and his comments about Donald Trump. Could that be part of this Iranian cyber attack? So is the Kamala Harris campaign or the Biden campaign actually using this leaked information? That would be nuts. That would be crazy. Because that would mean they're actually using information that was hacked by Iran. So that would make them what? Campaign partners? <laughs> it's nuts, man. So the person said they had a, quote, variety of documents from Trump's legal and court documents to internal campaign discussions. Yeah, this is big stuff, man. Um, can you say October surprise? Definitely. Um, which I don't really, what the hell could they possibly have on Donald Trump? This guy's like the most investigated man in, in human history. What could they possibly have that we haven't already seen? You know what I mean? This is this is what makes Donald Trump so appealing to a lot of people is they've already combed through this guy's entire life. I mean, his kids' lives, his former wives, everything. The, Donald Trump has been investigated for 10 frigging years, almost a decade. And I just don't think there's going to be anything else that they could possibly say about him. This is like almost the perfect um, example of the boy cried wolf. These, it's like everything the media says about Donald Trump now, people automatically assume is a lie. Well, normal, sane, rational people, not the Trump deranged people. Rational people are like, wait a minute. Didn't you say this about the Russia collusion hoax? Didn't you say this about the Hunter Biden laptop? Didn't you say this about COVID? It's like, just go down the list, down the list. And so people now, when they hear the media come out with these crazy narratives, they're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll see it when we'll, we'll believe it when we see it. That kind of thing. Um, just to kind of go through, I don't want to read this whole friggin' article. Um, it goes into uh, this happening to Hillary Clinton, the whole Russia collusion hoax. Um, so last month, reports emerged of the U.S. intelligence community receiving increasing evidence suggesting Iran was working on plots to kill Trump in retaliation for his decision to order the assassination of Iranian military officer Qasem Soleimani in 2020. There is no indication that the shooter was targeted Trump at a rally last month was connected to the plot. Yeah, well, there's I don't even want to get into that because that's nuts. That whole how the Secret Service managed to drop the ball that badly on the attempted assassination attempt on Trump is mind blowing. I mean, the the probability of some of these things happening is is, I mean, off the charts, like a billion to one. Uh, Secret Service members not allowed to go on the roof because it was too sloped, only to find out they were, were allowed on another roof that wasn't that was sloped even more. Um, then we heard that there were Secret Service agents inside the building, underneath the shooter. Uh, so all this stuff. I mean, you you got you know people talking about a second shooter now. There was some video footage released of a bike path. I don't even want to get into it because that rabbit hole goes deep. Um, they are investigating, the House Oversight Committee is investigating what happened there. I think it's quite shocking how we don't have any answers on how a former president and current Republican nominee was shot in the ear, right? He was shot in the head, and they don't have any answers. They don't know how it happened. That, folks, I mean, you can blame it on the media cycle. Yes, I understand that our media is insane. I mean, we, the media cycle is 24 hours tops. And for us to only sit and talk about Don, the, the almost assassination of Donald Trump for two, three days, and now it's as if it never happened, that is very weird. And something else is weird is the amount of conspiracies coming from the left about this assassination attempt of Donald Trump is off the chain. I've never seen anything like it. And I find it very funny how the same people that think January 6th wasn't 
a conspiracy. Think the attempted assassination of Donald Trump is a conspiracy. So, in other words, they think the government is so corrupt and the deep state is so deep that they orchestrated this plot to make it look like Donald Trump was almost assassinated. But they don't think the government was behind the events that took place on January 6th. <laughs> this is why, man, listen, these people, it is just like, the, it's like this hive mind, the Borg. And I was looking at pictures. I don't have it to show you right here. I should have put it on here. Um, you th scroll through social media and you see these memes from the left. And you know it's from a and you know it's from somebody on the left because they don't know jack squat about guns. And so they'll post this picture of a bullet, right? Of a round. And <laughs> it's like a 308 round. But and they'll say, You mean to tell me this went right this went a quarter inch from Donald Trump's head and it only nicked his ear and it didn't blow his head off or something like that? It's like, wait a minute, but and then they say, you know, another meme said, this is the round that came out of the AR-15 the shooter was using. And you mean to tell me Donald Trump is still alive? And it's it's no joke. It's like a 50 round, it's a 50 caliber round that they think is being shot out of an AR-15. Now, there can be the Beowulf, you know, you can shoot 50 caliber out of an AR-15 platform. It's not... That's not what he was shooting that day. And so you can tell that these memes are coming from the left because they don't know anything about guns. And yet this is something they want to take away from everybody. So I, you know, I have to go on there and correct them and tell them and post a picture of a round, a 223 round, and let them know. Be like, listen, the 223 round, which the shooter was using, that's what shot out of a typical AR-15 platform. It's the diameter of a 22 caliber. It's tiny. It's a very tiny round that goes very, very fast. And their minds are just blown. They don't know what to do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there you go. There's the whole um, Iran cyber attack versus, um, against the Trump campaign. And I'm sure we're probably going to get more information coming from that. And when we do, I will definitely share it with you. Um, but I want to actually get into why would Iran want to attack the Trump campaign? This is something that I think the left hasn't really grasped yet. I mean, because I see it all through social media. They don't know what to make of this. Iran, you know, they all they hear is Iran and Trump, and they automatically, their confirmation bias clicks in, and they're like, oh, yeah, this has to be Donald Trump colluding with Iran. To interfere in the election. You know what this means, right? This means that Iran is trying to prevent Donald Trump from getting elected because they see him as a threat to their interests, which means they don't see Kamala Harris as a threat to their interests. And if their interest is war and the destruction of Judeo Christian values and the destruction of Jews altogether, and really the entire Jewish race, then I would probably say I wouldn't be voting for that person that Iran is trying to get elected. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. That should tell you everything you need to know. Iran is like the big brother for Hamas and all these other, you know, micro-terrorist organizations like ISIS. And, you, you know, that Iran is the number one state sponsor for terrorism. And if they're trying to get Kamala Harris elected, that should throw up red flags for everybody, man. They obviously don't see Kamala Harris as a threat to their interests, which means they believe Kamala Harris is going to allow them to continue war because that's what Iran wants. They want war and the death of Israel. And... For whatever reason, they believe Kamala Harris is going to give them that. They see Donald Trump as a threat because why? Because Donald Trump brings peace. And these people don't like peace. In fact, the entire fourth, this entire Frankenstein fourth branch of government we have don't like peace. And now you understand why 
these people don't want Donald Trump getting elected because they want a war. And Donald Trump is the only president in my lifetime that did not start any new wars while he was in office. That is a big deal, folks. That is huge. I mean, that should be a pretty big game changer for a lot of people on how to decide who to vote for. It's like, okay, you got these two candidates. One we know brought peace and prosperity for four years, and the other one brought mayhem, death, and destruction, and war for four years. Because she's Kamala is pretty much the same thing as Biden. It's the same thing. I know they're trying to detach her from the Biden administration, but she's vice president. It's, it's not going to happen. So, I mean, you'd think it'd be pretty obvious. Okay, one brought war, one brought inflation, one brought prosperity. Hmm, it's pretty difficult. I just don't see how it's that difficult. But apparently it is. And I, I don't really think it's as, it's, you know, I don't think this whole Kamala Harris hype, this zeitgeist that the media has created for her is real. It's not real. What they're trying to do is they're trying to manipulate people enough into voting for the side they think is going to win. Because believe it or not, we have people that vote that way. They say, okay, which side, you know, has the bigger rallies, which side looks like it's winning, that's who I'm voting for. It's unfortunate, man, that we live in a country where people do not do their due diligence to inform themselves on what is going on in their basic society, in their I mean, these are basic civic duties of a citizen is to inform yourself about what your government's doing, how much they're taxing you, where your money's going, why is inflation so high, why are we in constant foreign conflicts when we weren't just a few years ago? Like these questions people should be asking, but believe it or not, a lot of people don't. Um, so I already went through the endorsement, Iran's endorsement for Kamala Harris. <laughs> so... I don't even know if I'm going to get in trouble for that. I probably will. Who cares, man? Um, I want to get into... Um, oh, before we get into that, now, do you think... I actually wrote this down in my notes. Do you think if... Do you think if Kamala Harris wins, do you think the media is going to investigate Kamala Harris for colluding with Iran? I mean, why not? Because that's exactly what they did to Donald Trump. And they claimed that Russia was interfering in the 2020 election or the Russia was interfering in the 2016 election. But yeah, that's exactly what Iran's doing. We'll see if they start an investigation into the collusion with Iran. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I had that written down in my notes. That's something I was thinking about. This is how I do my shows, folks. And that's that's why I say it's not normal for me to have to do it on camera. I normally like have all this stuff next to me and I just kind of grab it or I normally I just go through my phone. But we we are journeying down a new path now. Um so I want to get into this segment here, the media's role in shaping the narrative. You guys ever heard of a zeitgeist? I know I've said it before multiple times on this show. And it's because I've been hearing it a lot, too. So a zeitgeist is, let me get, I, I wrote this down. So a zeitgeist is a German term that literally translates to spirit of the time. It refers to the general intellectual, moral, and cultural climate or mood of a particular period in history. The zeitgeist encompasses the dominant ideas, beliefs, attitudes, and trends that characterize a specific era. That's essentially what they're trying to do for Kamala. They're trying to create this zeitgeist, this Kamala's the new in thing. She's a fad. She's, a, she's the next best thing since sliced bread. And it's just not true. It's, and I can prove it to you. So here is the media and this new, they want to turn Kamala Harris into this new happy warrior, right? She's so happy. She's bringing joy and love to America, if you just elect her, she'll bring so much joy and so much love to the people. <laughs> Anyways, here is the media trying to create that narrative. Here, check this out. 
Veterans is a kind of happy warrior. Happy warriors. Happy warriors. He was certainly the happy warrior last night and, and seemed to be the happy warrior last night. A happy warrior. Folksy backstory. Are going to be very happy warriors. There is a new happy warrior. Following the kind of happy warrior mold. Happy warrior. Happy warrior mentality. Wicked sense of humor. Look how happy the pig looks. Isn't that weird? This is how the media shapes narratives, just like this. They give these talking points, and I call it saturating the narrative. So they'll put, they'll put out a narrative, and then all of them will just repeat the same talking points. You guys remember that video that was circulating on social media? It went pretty viral of all the different news anchors saying the exact same sentence and you just you just seen it on the screen. There was like 20 or 30 different news anchors saying the exact same sentence. That was wild. I think they even played it on Joe Rogan's show. And that's what they do. The media manipulates the people. And they have been for decades. Up until, alter, uh, up until alternative media came out, which is the best thing the founders of this country would be extremely proud of, all of us, for doing this. The media has been manipulating people for decades. They own the information, and whoever owns the information can bend it and twist it any way they want. We talk about that all the time on the show. But up until alternative media, that's what they did. They would do things like this. Oh, Barack Obama's so cool. He's so hip and young, and, and he's so just amazing. Barack Obama, I fell for it. That is exactly why I voted for Barack Obama. In fact, it was me. Um, my, she was my, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time. And um, actually, I don't know if I went and voted with her or not. I can't remember. But I know it was me and a bunch of my friends. We all said, all right, yeah, you ready? We're going to go vote for Obama. It was the first time we were voting. I just turned 18. Um, the first time I could vote. And we were super excited to go vote for Barack Obama because he was cool, man. He was hip. He was the in thing. The media was just nonstop. Look how cool Barack Obama is. And then he gets elected, and it was a freaking nightmare, dude. Like, this guy, I mean, the when he started droning people and bombing them, I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me, man. That's why I didn't vote in 2012. It's the same stuff. They do, they're doing the same stuff now with Kamala Harris. They're trying the old playbook, and it's... Believe it or not, it works, man. I know it's pretty crazy, but it does. People fall for the zeitgeist. And I actually was looking into the zeitgeist and like how, how it's used in a political context. And so I did, I pulled up some research here. Um, so here's just a couple examples I found. So in the 1960s, the zeitgeist of the 1960s, in the United States and much of the Western world was characterized by counter by countercultural movements, civil rights activism, anti-war protests, and an emphasis on personal freedom and social change. This is why you guys, when we look back on the 60s, especially millennials, you know, people that are, you know, 30, 35, 36, I'm 37. When we look back at the 60s, what do we think of? We think of the anti-war hippies, the protests and the you know, peace and love, man, that is a zeitgeist. That is essentially the era, the right, that people, people kind of think that was an era of the day, right? That is what they're trying to do with Kamala Harris. They're trying to create this aura around her. They're, they're trying to create like this, this fad, this narrative, um, so that was an example that I was looking into. So, and then you had the digital age, us. The current zeitgeist is often described as being shaped by the digital revolution, characterized by the pervasive influence of the internet, social media, and rapid, technolo and rapid technological advancements, like the iPhone. So that was like the digital zeitgeist. Well, they're trying to create Kamala Harris into like this new, you know, woman of color, uh, Indian heritage, Kamala is awesome, and she's like the sister of Barack Obama's zeitgeist. <laughs> That's what they're trying to do. And so they and they can do this because the media is so powerful. It is so manipulative. 
they are playing the 2020 playbook, right? They are using the 2020 playbook almost identical to how they created the zeitgeist around COVID, how the media was scaring everybody into wearing masks outside in their car. You had people on surfboards getting arrested on a beach by themselves. Like this is, that's what the, the media did this. The media and its relationship with the administrative state, the government, created a zeitgeist around COVID. And we'll forever remember COVID as this insane, tyrannical, just absurd, ridiculous time in our society and culture where they were removing the basketball goals from the, from the basketball courts. They were telling people to go inside their homes when in fact they should have been outside of their homes. They shut down the gyms, but not the bars. They shut down the churches, but not the casinos. Like we seen this madness and all of it was because of the media. And that's what they're trying to do now with Kamala. So here you've seen the happy warrior thing. That's what they do. They just repeat these key words and phrases over and over. It is 100% manipulation. It's propaganda. The same stuff happened during the 1930s, Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union, all totalitarian and authoritarian regimes used the media to propagandize the people, to set the mood, to set the zeitgeist, to create an era, per se. Um, but this is what's weird. So I have a picture here. This is a picture that was taken from a rally. It was Kamala Harris and Tim Walls coming off of Air Force Two, which drives me nuts, by the way. I, I hate the fact that we are paying for this ginormous jumbo jet to fly Tim Walls and Kamala Harris around the country to campaign on our dollar. Like, we're here trying to figure out how to make car payments and how to pay our electric bills. And these people are flying around on our jet, jumbo jet, that costs probably millions of dollars a week to run. And, you know, it's just, they're so detached from America, man. This is why I freaking can't stand politicians, man, when they come out every four years and try and just manipulate people into voting for them, changing who they are, bringing out the fake Southern accents and saying you got hot sauce in your purse and you love chicken wings because you're talking to a black audience and then talking about breakfast burritos, which is so racist, by the way. I mean, these people are some of the racist people I've ever met in my life where they literally think black people are too dumb to go get IDs to vote. That's what they say. That's their excuse that we can't have voter ID because black people don't know how to use a computer and can't find the DMV. I mean, how freaking nuts is this, man? Like, what? Like, that's not racist? My God, man. That's crazy. Anyways, I don't want to get off topic. Don't get me started on that stupid. So it infuriates me, man. Anyways, so here's an image of Kamala Harris and Tim Walz coming off of a plane. And you see these red circles. What don't you see in those red circles? A crowd. That's right. We do not see the reflection of this crowd in that picture. That's kind of weird. Are they ghosts? <laughs> Are they just, like, not there? No, they're not there. <laughs> this is why you don't see Kamala Harris or Tim Walls waving like they normally do when they come off a plane. And what's even more weird is as you cycle through pictures that are circulating online, you see the same crowd for different pictures. So they're using this crowd in rallies, pictures with rallies. They're using this crowd in pictures in stadiums like these, you know, they're creating these massive crowds and they're using this photoshopped crowd right here. And so I think this is... <laughs> This is literally propaganda. That's what this is. When you have a political campaign photoshopping images to make it look as if a bunch of people are there to greet you on a to greet you while you're coming off a plane, that's sick to me. That is weird. That is dystopian. It's like we're living in a freaking George Orwell novel. And that's not it. 
So I got another video here I found on social media with in a stadium and they literally put curtains on the upper decks of the stadium to make it look like there's more people because they didn't want a video of all the empty seats. Check this out. In the bottom corner, that's what it normally looks like. And that's what it looks like during the rally. You see the curtains? Here, let me try and fix it. I'll play it again. Let me try and fix it. I'll play it again. Hang on. I got to figure out how to do this. All right, you see the curtains up at the top, third deck? They got the whole third deck curtained off. Boom. See it there in the back? Because they don't want it to look empty. This, uh, again, this is propaganda. This is the stuff that... This should tell people everything they need to know about what to expect from a Kamala administration. Nothing but lies and deception. When your campaign is built on lies and deception like Joe Biden's campaign was, you guys remember the no malarkey tour that literally started on a lie? The good people on both sides lie? Think about that. Joe Biden said, I started, I wanted to campaign for president because of Donald Trump saying there was good people or fine people on both sides. It's like, but that was a lie, dude. So you mean to tell me you started your campaign on a lie and then your entire campaign is nothing but lies? This is the same stuff, man. Kamala Harris's campaign is nothing but lies and deception. And I hope people are paying attention, man. I really do. I really do. And that's not the worst thing. So not only is she lying, right? Not only are they trying to propagandize the people by photoshopping images and then making them go viral online by blocking off the third the third tier of a stadium to make it look as if the stadium's full. You know, technically they can say that, be like, hey, look, the stadium's full. But what they're not telling you is that there's curtains covering the entire third story of the stadium. So not only are they lying and deceiving you, but Kamala Harris is out there stealing Donald Trump's policies. She's trying to change... She's trying to do a 180 on her policies because her ideas are so radical. This is why I always tell people, why do Democrats always have to run away from their policies? Why do they have to lie to people about what they want to implement in their policies? Why not just come out and tell them the truth? And what do I mean by this? Well, I got a video here of Kamala Harris at a campaign rally, I think in Arizona yesterday, saying this. Here, check this out. On tips for service and hospitality workers. What? Wait a minute. But that's Donald Trump's policy. <sighs> we talked about this before. We did a whole show on this. You can go back and look. It was like three weeks ago. I was amazed when Donald Trump came out and said, We are not going to tax people's tips. I was like, That's huge. I mean, that is a game changer for millions of people in this country. All the people that work in service and hospitality don't have to pay taxes on their tips. I said that right there is going to get him millions of votes. And what does Kamala Harris do? She steals his policies. The crazy thing is, is only one of them is actually going to implement the tax cuts on tips. Why? Because only one of them actually believes in cutting taxes. And that would be Donald Trump. Does Kamala Harris believe in cutting taxes? No. They want to increase taxes. <sighs> no one actually believes Kamala Harris is going to cut taxes when she gets in the office. It's just not going to happen. It's going to be the opposite. Everybody's taxes are going to go up. Whether that's through actual taxes, payroll taxes, or inflation. One or the other. But there is no way Kamala Harris is actually going to implement no tax on tips. It's just a lie, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lie. It's deceiving. It's meant to deceive because that is what they're doing. 
because this is a campaign of lies and deception. That's it. That's what Biden, that's what Joe Biden's campaign was about, was nothing but lies and deception, and that's what this campaign's about. I just hope the American people are smart enough to see through this. I hope they're, I hope they're, let's, I'm trying to think of the word. I hope they do their due diligence to do research on Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Why does Kamala Harris have to lie about her policy ideas? Because her policy ideas suck. And so in order to get votes, they have to trick people. That's, it's as simple as that. And they, they are not shamed at all in doing this. They, uh, there is no shame left. If you thought there was an ounce of shame in, in Democrat politicians, think again. Every time I think these people can't go any lower, they surprise me every time, man. Every single time. They, just, just, they are just pulling up wood chips at the bottom of the barrel here. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that this whole zeitgeist, this whole... They call it astroturfing is the technical name for it. And I actually, I, I have that here in my research um, that I actually missed. I didn't give to you. So astroturfing is the practice of creating fake grassroots, grassroots movements or support. It involves organizing artificial demonstrations, creating fake social media profiles, or hiring people to promote the candidate online. An example is a campaign might hire people to attend rallies, post favorable comments online, or engage in social media discussions to give the appearance of widespread support. It's exactly what's happening on social media, folks. You go through social media, you have bots, thousands of them. I run into bots on Facebook at least 95% of the time. It's fake people creating fake support for Kamala Harris with fake profiles. She has fake policy ideas, a fake photo of her crowd greeting her on the tarmac, a fake video in a stadium, Mark uh, blocking off the third row, the third tier at the stadium to make it look as if the stadium's full. I mean, this is just, this is nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And something else about those stadiums I was looking into. This is going to be the last little thing. These rallies, these so-called packed rallies that they keep you keep seeing online on social media on Facebook and, you know, X and Instagram, you know how they're saying, "Oh yeah, all the, Kamala Harris's rallies are jam-packed. There's they're so packed that people are having to go home because there's there's not enough room inside the stadium." which I haven't heard that one yet, but you do see that all the time with Donald Trump's rallies. I just find it hard to believe. It's, it's really hard to convince people when you're circulating photoshopped photos of you coming off the Air Force Two. Like, so this is, listen, this is why they, they're doing this. This was all a plan from the very beginning, was to get rid of Joe Biden and insert Kamala Harris at the very last minute so people didn't have enough time to vet her. And that's why we're here. And Republicans and conservative podcast hosts and radio hosts, we need to make sure that we are getting this information out to our audiences, period. We have to make sure that people are informed with the vetting process of Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Do not let these people do this last little stretch of 90 days of this election after Two years of having to deal with Joe Biden, and then on the last minute, they switch him out for Kamala Harris as if it wasn't planned. And then don't give people enough time to vet her and say, oh, my God, she, so, she supports that? I'm not voting for her if she supports that. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to gaslight and run out the clock. That is the campaign. That is the Kamala campaign strategy. Anyways, I started looking into this, these rallies, right? So I'm looking into these rallies, and I go into this, I start looking up the Arizona rally, and one of the things I noticed was, let me get down here, sorry. So I went to, AB, so I, I googled it, I went to USA Today, there's an article, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls in Arizona. 
where and when is their rally? So it says Vice President Kamala Harris is visiting Arizona this week along with her running mate, Tim Walls, as part of a tour of swing states. The rally will take place on Friday evening, Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale. The Arizona Republic has confirmed. So I'm like, okay. So I look into a local paper and I find this. This is from a local outlet, KJZZ in Phoenix. And it's a Q&A kind of session for their platform, for their website. And one of the people asked, can I attend the Kamala Harris campaign event in Arizona on Friday? And then you scroll down, you go through and it says, Vice President Kamala Harris is heading to Arizona this Friday on the heels of Vice Presidential Candidate J.D. Vance's visit to Glendale last week. In the run-up to the visit, several KJZZ listeners have asked, where is the campaign event in the Valley and is it open to the public? Question mark. The rally will be held Friday evening at Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale and is invitation only. So all the people in these rallies, they're there by invitation. Okay, that's possible. Doesn't seem very grassroots to me. (laughs) You know what it seems like? It seems like there's people making a lot of phone calls to a lot of DNC operatives. And so they can't very well be out there ballot harvesting if all of them are attending rallies. (laughs) I think what they're doing is they're calling up all of their electioneers, their DNC operatives, you know, the people that go chase ballots, the real hardcore Democrats. And I think they're inviting them to these rallies. You notice how we don't see any, like, guy-on-the-street interviews of people coming out of these rallies? We don't hear any, you know, Q&As after the rally. We don't see anything natural. There's nothing grassroots about any of this. You guys remember when Chuck Schumer came out, and he was talking about this was when Kamala Harris replaced Joe Biden. He was like, from the grassroots, the middle out and the bottom up, the voters have picked Kamala Harris to run for president. It's like, wait a minute, the voters didn't do anything, you whack job. You guys did. A, a, a 2,000 delegates in a smoke-filled back room picked Kamala Harris. The voters didn't do nothing. So I, I don't think you can call that grassroots. Same thing with these rallies. I don't think these are grassroots rallies. I think these are paid DNC operatives that are being invited to go to these rallies. Why would you have an invitation only? Because they know that people aren't going to show up. How do you get people to show up to an event? You hire them. (laughs) And this was what's crazy. You guys ready for this? This is nuts. So the Arizona Democratic Party started sending out non-transferable invitations by email on Thursday afternoon. Only those who RSVP to the event. And you ready for this? And bring government-issued ID. Matching the invitation will be allowed in the arena. (sighs) So these people, they mandate government issue IDs to get into a Kamala Harris rally. But they don't mandate government issued IDs to vote. (laughs) Does anybody see the problem with this man? Like... Do do Democrats not ever have a moment of self-reflection? I mean, the complete lack of self-awareness in Democrats is astonishing. (laughs) It's crazy, man. You can't make this stuff up, man. You just can't. So that's all I got for now. I don't, I don't, um, I was going to get into a couple other things, but we're running low on time. So I'm going to, uh, we'll get into it on the next segment. I want to get into this uh, investigation from Jim Jordan that he's bringing against he's bringing against Judge Mershon's daughter, the judge that um, that's going to be sentencing former President Donald Trump and Republican nominee, the judge that's going to be sentencing Donald Trump here in a few weeks. Yeah, his daughter is under investigation by Jim Jordan because of all the money she made from Democrat donors, like. Nobody sees that as a problem. Democrats don't find that a little bit, I don't know, concerning, maybe a little bit conflicting, maybe. (laughs) 
And ladies and gentlemen, all of this is allowed to happen. All of this is being perpetrated. All of this is being portrayed. All of this is being disseminated by the media. The media is 100% in control of this campaign. Our media outlets, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, they're the ones officially running the Kamala Harris campaign. Our media literally conducted a coup against a sitting president to remove him from running for president in order to replace him with somebody that didn't get one primary vote. All of that was done by the media. And it all started during that debate, the, the, the debate that heard round the world. That was a coup against a sitting president. And it was all conducted by our media. So our, we essentially have a government, an administrative state that's being run by our media apparatus, is being run by the Democrat Party and the media apparatus. And I wanted to go into this media stuff real quick. Just for a few of you people out there that may not know, but there's only a handful of people that own all of the media, 99.9% .9 of it. So in the United States, the majority of news outlets are controlled by a small number of large media conglomerates. These corporations own a wide range of media properties, including television networks, newspapers, online news platforms, and radio stations. And the number one conglomerate, the, one, the number one corporation is Comcast Corporation. They own NBC Universal, which includes the NBC Broadcast Network, MSNBC, CNBC, Telemundo, and a number of local NBC affiliates, among other media assets. Number two, the Walt Disney Company, who owns ABC News, ABC Broadcast Network, including ESPN, which primarily sports, which primarily focuses on sports, has significant influence in society and culture. I agree. You have Hulu. Disney has controlling stake in Hulu, which offers news content among its streaming options. Paramount Global, formerly Viacom, CBS. CBS News owns the CBS Broadcast Network, CBS News, and a number of local CBS affiliates. MTV Networks, Warner Bros. Discovery, owns CNN, one of the largest global news networks, as well as headline news and other news-related media assets. Fox Corporation, we all know who owns Fox. Um, they own major cable news network, as well as the Fox Broadcast Network, which includes other news programming. You have News Corp, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Post. News Corp owns these major newspapers along with a variety of other print and digital media assets. The New York Times Company um, is the New York Times Company is influential due to the reach and impact. You have Amazon owns the Washington Post. The Gannett Company owns USA Today. These corporations exert significant control over the news landscape in the United States, influencing not only what news is reported on, but also how it's presented. The concentration of media ownership has raised concerns about the diversity of viewpoints and the potential for conflicts of interest in news coverage. Yeah, I would say it's a pretty big freaking problem because we have these media conglomerates that are essentially running our elections. And if you really think about it, they're running our country. Our media runs our country because... They can make or break somebody. They can make somebody's career or they can tear them down. This is, this is what the problem is with our media. And our media has become so biased. And they have become so out in the open with their, their animosity towards Donald Trump and, and the political opposition. They're not even hiding it anymore. I think the media has always been biased. I think these people, these, these news anchors, they've always had like this this grudge against Republicans and conservatives, but they were too afraid to kind of show anybody because it was really kind of shameful to come out and show your bias as a reporter, as a journalist. But Donald Trump coming into the picture changed all that. When Donald Trump came into the picture, it essentially legitimized all these news anchors to show their who their to show their true colors, to show how biased they were. And it just spiraled out of control. So one person couldn't control their emotions, 
And then the next person was like, oh, I feel the same way. So I'm going to say how I feel. That's where you get Rachel Maddow, Joe and Mika. You get all these. Joe and Mika was actually a Trump supporter in the beginning. Then they flip because they're a bunch of political hacks. And they're just grifters. They are the all-time grifters of media. Joe and Mika are the worst. These people, they're a bunch of frauds. In fact, all of these people are. Our media companies, these anchors, these so-called journalists, are some of the dumbest people this country has to offer. Ever. They're all fake, phony frauds. And worst of all, they're dumb. So essentially, you have our government being run by a bunch of idiot news anchors. Because that's why everything looks like crap. That's why this place looks like it does. That's why this place seems like it's going to hell in a handbasket. Because it is. Because our media is the one controlling the zeitgeist. Our media is the one controlling our society and culture. Why people still can continue to listen to media is beyond me. Their numbers are way down, like historical low. Um, their approval rating is actually lower than Congress, which is insane for the first time. I've never seen that. Where I mean, usually Congress is like 8%. Well, now Congress is like 8%, but the media is like at 6% approval rating for our media. <laughs> So it's, I hope people are catching on and listen, if people want to get out of this, if people want to go back to normalcy, if people want peace and prosperity, you have to turn off the media outlets. You have to turn off CNN. You have to turn off M MSNBC. How many times are people going to continue being lied to and continue listening to them? Like that is like somebody lying to my face and then the very next day getting advice from them on how to do something. It's like, What? It's, it's, it's so, it's so bizarre. Anyways, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for now. On the next episode, I want to talk about this investigation from the House Oversight Committee. Jim, Jim Jordan is investigating Judge Mershon's daughter um, for all the money that she was making on the Trump trial. And I don't see how Democrats don't find this a little bit conflicting. Uh, the judge's daughter getting millions of dollars from people like Adam Schiff. And they don't think that has any influence on the trial at all. They don't think the judge, like what? The judge doesn't know his daughter's making millions of dollars off of this case. So that's something I want to get into. I think that's a little bit concerning because it is the weaponization of our justice system. And it is being disseminated by the media. The media is behind that as well. The media pushed this narrative and created Donald Trump to be this, this raging monster and then that's actually going to segue me into something I want to get out there on the airwaves, which is Donald Trump's civil lawsuit from E. Jean Carroll that was not a rape case. I know I keep seeing this online where people are saying, are you really going to vote for a rapist? Donald Trump was not charged or convicted of rape. It is a lie, another lie disseminated by our Pravda propaganda media. That unfortunately is not doing anybody favors and has actually become the people's, the, the enemy of the people. So the same people that are supposed to push back on, to, on tyranny, the same people that are supposed to push back on tyranny and expose the lies and corruption from our government to prevent tyranny are now bathing in it. They are now complicit in the rise of communism in America, the rise of Marxism and socialism. The rise of a tyranny, all because our media refuses to report the truth and have chosen sides to try and get their candidate across the finish line, like it actually matters to them. So while the American people have been suffering in squalor the last four years because of a feckless, useless Biden-Harris administration, and everybody's lives are being completely ruined, all these news anchors, you know, like Joy Reid and, and Caitlin Collins and Joe and Mika, yeah, they're going to go spend their millions of dollars in their multi-million dollar condominium on a beach somewhere while we all sit and suffer in squalor. And then they're going to come back in four years, six months before an election, and tell you who to vote for again, as if it really matters to them. I think these media, Inc., they need to just get the hell out of our elections, man. If they're not going to report the truth, if they're not going to be honest to the people, then get the hell away. I mean, you're, you are now becoming the biggest threat to our democracy. The media has become the biggest threat to our republic. Just going to go ahead and leave that there. So we'll get into that. All kinds of stuff we got to get into. So 
As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you have a terrific Monday. I friggin' hate Mondays, man. Um, but hey, it's a start to a new week. So just think of it that way. And uh, hopefully it goes well for you. And I'll talk to you guys here in a little bit. God bless you. God bless America. And long live the Republic. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.